Karen. Hello, darling. Is it nap time over there yet? Yeah, they just went down for quiet time. Oh, yay, quiet time. Yeah, they're playing quietly in their rooms so I can relax. Woohoo! Oh, darling, you deserve a break. I'm so excited for you. Pop open a bottle of your finest wine. Yes, it may seem like the smallest break from parenting deserves a celebration, but how do you begin to implement quiet time when your child doesn't need a nap anymore? Stay tuned because we are going to talk about my top seven tips on implementing quiet time for the non-napper. Yano, your favorite pediatric sleep consultant and potty training coach. I love sharing tips and tricks on potty training and sleep training. So if you're interested in these videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel and click the bell so that you get notified every time I put out a new video, which just so happens to be every single week. But today we are talking all about quiet time and how to implement quiet time when your child no longer needs a nap. It is so important to implement quiet time for your child when they don't need a nap anymore because they really need to rest, relax, and rejuvenate their brain and their body so that they can actually handle a full day of stimulation. Quiet time is a great time for your child to just kind of wind down from the, a busy morning and just be able to prepare their bodies to take in a lot more childhood excitement for the rest of the day. And to be quite honest, especially in the times that we're living in, it is really important for parents, especially those working from home, to have a little bit of quiet time, whether that means you need to eat a meal in peace, have a conference call for your job, or just work, or just relax, or whatever you need to do. It's really important to have this quiet time to yourself. And no, it is not selfish to make your child have quiet time because you need quiet time. It's completely okay, it's acceptable, and it is necessary. So once your child no longer needs a nap anymore, you need to implement quiet time seven days a week. It needs to be every day, it needs to be consistent, and you need to set the expectations that your child is going to cooperate with quiet time every single day. This isn't a choice. And you can say that to your child. So that brings me to tip number one. You need to set specific ground rules and make a visual chart of them. So let's say one of the rules of quiet time is that your child needs to be quiet. So what you definitely need to do is just Google a clip art photo of shh, that. You want that face. And what could even be more fun is if you wanted to make a visual chart of quiet time rules with your child, take pictures of what you expect your child to do. So if you want your child to be quiet during quiet time, have your child go like this shh, and take a picture of them doing that and put that as rule number one. They need to be quiet. And you can do this with all of the rules. Just have your child show you the behaviors that you expect to see during quiet time take a picture of them, print it out, and even make like a poster board that you can just take out at quiet time and then put it behind the dresser or in the closet or somewhere, just put it away when it's not quiet time. This isn't something that needs to be on display 24 seven. Tip number two is to use a timer. Whether that means you're using a toddler clock or just any generic, like you can literally go to the dollar store and get a $1 timer that you can set for quiet time. Let your child help you set the timer so that they visually see that this is happening, this is real life, there is a timer and they need to adhere to the timer and not come out of quiet time until the timer is done. This way your child will have a visual indicator of how much time is left. Even though your child probably can't tell time, they can still tell that the numbers are not zero, 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 and that quiet time is not over yet. So a lot of times parents will tell me that when they try to implement quiet time, that their child will keep coming to them saying, is quiet time over, is quiet time over, is quiet time over? But when you have a timer or a toddler clock, then you definitely can tell your child, do not keep asking me if quiet time is over until your clock says zero, 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 and quiet time is over. Tip number three is to implement a quiet time box. Now this box should be something that you decorate with your child. So maybe get a big shoe box or if you wanted to go to a craft store and just get a box or a crate that you can paint with your child. But whatever you decide to use, make sure that your child is a part of the decorating process so that they're a little bit more excited and encouraged to use this box during quiet time. Now you might be wondering, well, what am I supposed to put in this box? What I want you to do is get supplies and activities for your child to do only during quiet time. 
So you take the box out when quiet time starts and once their timer goes off and quiet time is over, then they need to put this quiet time box away and they can have it again tomorrow at quiet time. That way this box is only filled with activities that your child can only have during quiet time so it makes it something new and exciting. And speaking of new and exciting, it's important to kind of rotate supplies out of this box every couple of weeks, but just kind of depending on, you know, when your child gets sick of what's already in there and if they're starting to lose interest, then you know that it's time to rotate what's in the quiet time box. I am going to have a link in the description box down below for my quiet time guide for parents and that is going to show you a ton of ideas of activities that I highly encourage you putting in your quiet time box. I actually did not put this in my top seven tips for quiet time because I kind of feel like it's a given, but I also feel like I need to address it and make sure that everybody knows that when I talk about quiet time, it means that it is not screen time. Quiet time and screen time are two completely different things and when your child is having quiet time, they should not be having screen time. They are not the same and this is not screen time. This is quiet time and sometimes I even like to just call it independent play time for some of the older toddlers who may say like, well, I'm a big kid, I don't need quiet time anymore, then say, okay, you're having independent play time. So tip number four, I am going to tell you to give your child rewards after a successful quiet time. Now, maybe this is a special snack. My oldest child loves Nutella and pretzels. So when he was younger, if he had a really good quiet time, maybe his little sister was still sleeping and him and I would go outside on our back deck and enjoy a sweet snack of Nutella and pretzels together. Something so simple and just so fun to have that time together and it's just a little special something after a successful quiet time. If you're not interested in rewarding your child with a special treat or special food, you can always substitute that with a special outing. Maybe you go for a walk around the neighborhood, maybe you take a trip to a local playground, or maybe even a nature center. There are so many outdoor activities, and I know that's something that everybody is looking for these days when most things are shut down, but definitely like see if there are some outdoor activities or things like that that you can kind of encourage your child that if they have a great quiet time, that you can do this after quiet time. Tip number five is to consider doing audiobooks, maybe they're even books on CD or like whatever they do these days, that may be a great opportunity for your child to encourage a little bit longer of a stretch of quiet time. I really love going to the library and getting the packs and I'm pretty sure my library does books on CD, but they do like packs where you can get the book and the CD or tape or whatever it may be, um, where your child can actually follow along and turn the pages when it's time to turn the page. As opposed to just listening. So you're really giving them that audio and visual stimulation as opposed to just the audio, but it's definitely a great idea if you need to be able to stretch that time a little bit longer and you're still avoiding screen time. Tip number six is to make quiet time short and work your way up to an hour or more. So let's say you have a really busy toddler who can only handle 15 minutes of quiet time, then only expect 15 minutes out of your child for quiet time. Maybe after three to five days of a 15 minute quiet time, increase it to 25 minutes and gradually increase the amount of time. You don't even really have to tell your child that you're increasing the time because they don't really know what time it is or how long they've been in there. But definitely start small and gradually increase the amount of time as you go. Now, I typically recommend that quiet time is about one hour. If your child can handle an hour and a half, that is great. That's just like a bonus half hour, but I don't expect toddlers to be able to entertain themselves for a full hour without some redirection. Speaking of the length of time your quiet time might be, I also want to kind of reiterate that this quiet time should take place in your child's room. However, if you want it to take place somewhere else, that's totally fine. So like maybe in, in your bedroom or maybe in the living room or somewhere where there's obviously not a television going on and there's not other people, then that's fine as long as it's consistent. But typically nine times out of 10, I recommend doing this in your child's bedroom because that is a designated resting space for your child already. Mm -hmm. Tip number seven is that when quiet time is over, I want you to show your child 
so much excitement that you're so excited to see them again and that you're so excited to spend some time with them and then I want you to do just that. Spend some time with your child one-on-one, -on -one, undivided attention with you and your child. Now, of course, there's probably going to be people saying, well, I have more than one kid. Well, guess what? So do I. <laughs> I have three kids and they all woke up at different times and I kind of staggered their nap times or quiet times on purpose. Even if it's only five to 10 minutes of difference, it's a huge difference when that means you're getting that five to 10 minutes of one-on-one -on -one time with your child after quiet resting time. So. I hope you really got a lot of information from this video and a lot of really good tips. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to go down to the link in my description box down below and download my free guide to implementing quiet time with your toddler. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And in the meantime, while you're waiting for my next video, check out these videos over here and share this video with your friends because sharing is caring. And I will see you next time. Bye. Ha <laughs> ha Oh my god, I'm gonna say this 20 times. So that brings me to <laughs> Bada bing bada boom.